what like why do we even need to talk be be talking about this? Like, do we need expiral in gynecologic surgery and OBGYN in general? Sure. So as we know in the United States, we do have an opioid epidemic. And anything we can do for our patients to provide any kind of pain relief without having to give narcotics, I believe, is in our best interest. For a long time, when I was training, we didn't have this and we would give, you know, 30 Percocet or whatever to patients after hysterectomies or C-sections. And, you know, especially in um, not only in hyster- in, in uh, gynecology, but obstetrics, it's really important because patients, you know, if they're having a C-section and they need to take care of a baby, they need to take care of other children, having to take opioids is not ideal. And so I think it's really important. And I, when I started utilizing this in my practice, it was a game changer for me to be able to offer this to my patients. Yeah, and Amy, thanks for having us, and it's a pleasure to be here with you as moderating this podcast. It is, it is fun to share experiences among each other, and I learn a lot from my colleagues and try to figure out what they do to enhance patient experience and outcomes. And one of the biggest problems I always saw was managing post-op pain. And every patient's different, right? You all know that some women can have a hysterectomy and never take a pain pill. It's amazing. It, it, it always shocks me. And then when you see some patients, you know, postoperatively really require a lot of analgesics, whether it's a minimally invasive hysterectomy or an open hysterectomy or a C-section. I guess we haven't figured out how to do a minimally invasive cesarean section yet, but I have a surgical practice and about seven years ago in the state of Florida, there was a big program through the state on reducing opioid exposure. And I do about 25 hysterectomies every month, and I was a high opioid prescriber. And I realized I needed to do something to address the issue, and I got exposed to uh, bupivacaine, liposomal bupivacaine is what Expiro is. And I really didn't understand much about it and didn't know how to use it. So I reached out and tried to figure it out and saw that there was actually some good data around Expiro and other specialties, like in orthopedics, in hemorrhoidectomy, in bunionectomy, the original trials with Expiro, these phase three trials were pretty remarkable. I mean, I've never had a bunionectomy or a hemorrhoidectomy, and I hope I never do, but the, the reduction of opioid exposure and the recovery was pretty impressive. And that was really early on before we had good data on cesarean. And, and and I'm sure Paula knows, and Amy, you probably know, there's really been some, and most of them came out of Texas, Paula and uh, Dallas. And, you know, that, that C-section data was pretty impressive. But prior to that, there wasn't a whole lot of data around gynecology. So I was prescribing a lot of opioids and realized I needed to do something to change. So I learned about Expiro, uh, a unique formulation that gives a delayed delivery of the pivocaine into soft tissue. And it's indicated for soft tissue of any type. It's also indicated for uh, some of these, which I don't know much about, but some of these brachial plexus, shoulder surgeries, and other types of blocks in, in orthopedics. It's used a lot in orthopedics. So we mobilized the, the team and tried to figure out if Expiril would be worthwhile. And it was pretty expensive to use back then. It's gotten much better. And now there's a lot of contracting to allow us to use it more freely. But it was indicated on any open search exploratory laparotomy, TAH, is open myomectomies. And back then, I couldn't find an anesthesiologist that would do a tap block, a transabdominus plane block. And Paul, you probably had the same experience early on. And there's been a really wonderful educational opportunity in, with anesthesia. Now anesthesia will do a tap block. And a tap block is a regional block, as you all know. That really has been a huge, huge help in cesarean section post-op pain uh, management, as well as open hysterectomy and open myomectomy. And it now has moved into these multimodal pain management uh, protocols. 
uh, the American College of OBGYN, the ERAS Society, the American College of Oncology, all endorse some type of mechanism to manage post-surgical pain other than opioids. So it really has moved into a viable option. And you can either do it through a tap block that anesthesia does, either prior or after your procedure. Of course, with cesarean section, you can't do it until after the baby's delivered. Well, they'll take liposomal bupivacaine and do a regional block, and it works wonderful. Or you as the surgeon, and this is where I'd like to hear what you all do, but you can do soft tissue infiltration where you do volume expansion. Expiral comes in a 20 ml valve. So you have 20 mLs, and you can volume expand that with normal saline and bupivacaine or uh, hydrochloride bupivacaine or what we know as Marcaine. And maybe, but Paula, do you use Marcaine with yours? I usually do the 20 of, uh, of the Expiro, and then I do 30 of the Marcaine and 30 of saline. So that gives me 80 cc's to kind of work with, you know, a volume. So if I do a local, you know, a local infiltration myself, if my, my anesthesiologist for some reason is not able to do the tap block. So what that is, is that's called ad mixing, where you can mix hydrochloride bupivacaine, which is a fast acting, short duration analgesic. And every, OB, every OBGYN has used Marcaine our whole careers, right? Uh, and, and so you take Marcaine, add mix it with Expiril, 30 to 20, that's 50 cc's. And then you have the capability to volume expand that out to a total of 300 cc. So you have plenty of Expiril to do soft tissue infiltration. And one of my aha moments uh, using Expiril, and I think we've all kind of had those on a left Barthlin's gland excision that I did, which I, you know, I hate, I, I hate that operation. Ugh. I hate those. Yeah. Those are not my favorite at all. I send them to Your my Euro guys. Local, uh, <laughs> yeah. lovely Euro guys. That's so funny. <laughs> or my GYN ox. Yeah. Uh, after 20 years, I was like, I'm done. 